Our history of conflict did not begin with the coups. The roots of our current tensions stretch back to the colonial era during the British Empire, during which the British Empire played a significant role in shaping Fiji's current societal landscape. In 1874, Fiji was ceded to Great Britain, and with that began a period of colonization that introduced deep and lasting divisions within our society. British colonizers were primarily interested in Fiji for its political and economic interests, including the trade of sugar, and to enable the operation of this industry, they brought over 60,000 Indian laborers, known as girmitiyas, under the indentured labor system. These girmitiyas were subjected to harsh working conditions and were largely segregated from indigenous Fijians who were kept within their traditional village settings. This segregation fostered mistrust and rivalry between the two communities, laying the groundwork for future ethnic tensions. For example, during these times, the British warned Fijians that if they harbored Indians who were trying to escape, they would be severely punished. And this may very well be the reason for warnings we'd receive as children growing up, where we were told not to play outside in the dark for there would be Indians awaiting to capture us, and vice versa was being told to in Indian families. This might be seen as jokes now, but these were the result of decades of segregation and the animosity put in place by the British that eventuated into something we taught our very children, and that was to fear their neighbors, their brethren. The colonizers' land policies further exacerbated these divisions. Land was systemically taken from indigenous Fijians, disrupting their traditional way of life and leading to long-standing disputes and grievances. At the same time, Indo-Fijians were denied land ownership, deepening the economic and social divide. Additionally, the displacement of the Banabans during phosphate mining and rutumans highlighted the pattern of exploitation and marginalization that characterized the British colonial rule. The British governance system reinforced social stratification, maintaining traditional hierarchies among only the indigenous Fijians within whom they had influenced while excluding Indo-Fijians from political power. This exclusion contributed to a sense of alienation among the Indo-Fijian community, which has lasting repercussions. The colonial legacy of ethnic, social, and political division has been a major factor in Fiji's post-independence instability, including the coups of 87, 2000, and 2006. Additionally, the practice of blackbirding, where Pacific Islanders were forcibly taken or deceived into endangered labor, brought profound suffering and injustice to our region. Many Fijians and others from across the Pacific were subjected to brutal conditions and treated as mere commodities rather than human beings. This exploitation left scars that are still felt today, not just among the descendants of those who were taken, but across the entire society. The trauma of these historical events do not simply disappear. It lives on in us, the youth of Fiji, through the phenomenon of epigenetics and intergenerational trauma. The legacies of blackbirding, the Girmatiyas indenture, and the displacement and marginalization during the colonial era set the stage for the conflicts that would later erupt, creating wounds that have yet to fully heal. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission is an opportunity for us to address these deep-seated injustices and to work towards a more inclusive, peaceful and equitable future. As young people, we are acutely aware of the impact that history has on our present. Intergenerational trauma is a reality we cannot ignore. It affects how we interact with each other, how we perceive our place in society and how we respond to challenges. The trauma of colonization and the coups that followed has been passed down through generations. For history isn't just a story we tell, it's the legacy we live. To illustrate this, I wanted to share a study conducted at Emory University in um, Atlanta, Georgia, United States of America. So in this study, researchers trained mice to fear a particular smell by pairing it with a mild electric shock. So they would introduce the smell into the room where the mice are, and whenever they'd smell it, they'd give them an electric shock to the point where even just smelling the scent without giving them the shock, the mice would scatter in fear. Astonishingly, this fear was passed down to their offspring who, despite having never encountered the smell or the shock, 
displayed traits of fear when the smell was introduced to them for the first time. The trauma of the parent was imprinted on the child, manifesting in behaviors that the offspring could not explain. This study is a powerful metaphor for how the trauma of our ancestors is passed down to us. We too inherit fears, anxieties, and behaviors rooted in historical experiences that we never lived through. As Dr. Gabo Mate, a renowned expert on trauma said, trauma is not what happens to you, it's what happens inside you as a result of what happened to you. This quote resonates deeply with us, the youth of Fiji. We carry within us the unresolved trauma of colonization, displacement, and cultural erosion. These experiences have shaped our worldviews, our interactions with each other, and our sense of self. This trauma manifests in behaviors that perpetuate division and conflict, and it is up to our generation to break this cycle. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission gives us a chance to confront this pain, to understand it, and to begin the process of healing, not just for ourselves, but for the future generations. As the youth of Fiji, we have our perspectives regarding the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. First and foremost, the question of whether the Commission can truly be independent and impartial. We have grown up in a world where power is often concentrated in the hands of a few, and we envision that this Commission will not be influenced by those same forces. We trust that the Commission will be firmly rooted in its values of neutrality, accountability, impartiality, equality, and the principles of do no harm, where the conversations and interventions being held will not cause further harm to the victims, but sufficiently aid in their healing. On the subject of the composition of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it needs to be representative of the diversity of this nation we call home, with those who have a range of skills and expertise to ensure that the Commission effectively undertakes its mandate, and furthermore, that the Commission will exhaust all possible avenues of engaging with our communities, including in person and virtually, the majority of young people live these days. We, the youth of Fiji, have high aspirations for what this commission can achieve. We hope to see the future of our nation's history come to light, not to reopen all old wounds, but to finally heal them. We want to create a record of our past that is honest and complete, so that the future generations won't have to repeat the same mistakes. We also hope to see the voices of the marginalized and oppressed heard, perhaps for the first time. As young people, we value justice and fairness, and we believe that everyone in Fiji deserves to have their story told and told accurately. We hope that this commission will give those who have suffered in silence a chance to speak, and in doing so, restore a sense of dignity and justice to their lives. Finally, we hope to see the findings of this commission lead to real meaningful change in our society, whether it's through reforming our governance structures, improving inter-ethnic relations, or addressing the lingering effects of colonization and displacement. We want to see our nation move forward on a path of unity and equality. We, the youth of Fiji, are filled with hope for what this commission can achieve. On a personal level, we hope for closure, not just for ourselves, but for our parents, our grandparents, and all those who have suffered in silence. We hope that by acknowledging the pain of the past, we can finally move forward free from the weight of history. Collectively, we hope that the Commission will help us build a stronger, more united Fiji. We want to see a future where our differences are celebrated, not feared, where disputes are resolved through dialogue, not violence, and where every citizen feels a true sense of belonging in this land we all call, call home. In conclusion, let me emphasize that as a youth of Fiji, we stand united in our support for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We believe in its potential to guide us toward a future where the pain of our past no longer dictates our destiny, but instead informs a path of healing, unity, and progress. Together we can build the Fiji we all dream of, a Fiji where every individual can live in peace, dignity, and mutual respect. Naka.